In this video, I'm going to answer the question from Mike Royce and his question was, what are the benefits of using a limited liability partnership? It's a vehicle that isn't used that often. So I'm going to cover with you some of the kind of key advantages that I think you should be aware of, which might hopefully encourage you to look at an LLP depending on your personal tax circumstances. This is a question from Mike Royce and his question was, can you talk me through some of the benefits of running an LLP in relation to service accommodation? And part of the question was, uh, what other benefits are there apart from capital allowances? I'll very quickly cover capital allowances right now for you, Mike, just in case uh, you wanted to know that as a reminder or a refresher. So when you buy a, let's say, commercial property to use for uh, service accommodation, the first thing you've got is when you're buying the building, as long as the previous owner hasn't used all the capital allowances, there's going to be fixtures and fittings in the building which you can claim as capital allowances. Then when you refurb the property, you've got additional fixtures and fittings uh, and equipment that you install in the property or the properties. Uh, that also qualifies, or some of those costs at least anyway, qualify for capital allowances. So it, and then what you do is you write them off against your profits. If they, it's in a limited company, you write it off against the profits, which means you reduce your tax liability, but the money's stuck in the company. So if you take the money out, you've got to pay personal income tax, whether you take it as a bonus, salary or dividend. Limited liability partnership, you write off uh, the capital allowances and whatever's left over, you pay personal tax on that or the separate partners pay the personal tax depending on their overall income. So if you made 100 grand uh, in uh, profit in an LLP, you wrote off £100,000 worth of capital allowances, you've got no tax to pay. But let's just assume you had all that £100,000 sat in the limited liability partnership bank account, you can draw that money down now without paying any income tax whatsoever. The second benefit, of course, is that uh, if you are registered for a pension scheme, you can transfer up to £40,000 every year into your pension scheme and therefore reduce your uh, taxable profit. Uh, if you're running service accommodation alongside other businesses because so the profit from service accommodation qualifies uh, towards your net relevant earnings for pension purposes above and beyond that some of the other advantages i want to very quickly share with you mike about uh, running a limited liability partnership are as follows the first one and the obvious one of course is that you have limited liability which is good the second thing is there's no joint and several liability. So if one of the other members is involved in a wrongful act, you are not liable. Whereas in a standard partnership, you would be liable. The third one is it's easier to recruit members into an LLP than it is, let's say, into a normal partnership because of limited liability. And that's quite important. The fourth one, which I've already very quickly covered when I talked about capital allowances, is there's no double taxation. So in a limited company, the company pays corporation tax on the profits. You then draw down uh, income. And when you draw down income, depending on your personal tax situation, especially if you used up your uh, personal allowance and your dividend allowance, you'll then pay income tax on all the money you take out. Whereas in an LLP, uh, it's transparent for tax purposes. That, mean, that means your share of the profits are taxable on you. However, you're not paying tax twice. Another advantage is that uh, partners can allocate profits as they choose. So let's say, Mike, you're in partnership with somebody else, uh, a, a school friend, and she owns 50% and you own 50% of the business. If in, in one year uh, you both decide to allocate 75% of the profits to yourself, uh, and 25 to your uh, business partner, that's absolutely fine. Uh, so you can decide how to uh, use the profit share ratio depending on your personal circumstances and needs in that particular year. So it gives you good flexibility. Another one is that because you are not employees and you're partners of the business, there's, you don't pay class one national insurance, which is obviously uh, a saving. Uh, that's subject to the disguised remuneration rules, which I'm not going to cover for you today. All you need to know is as long as uh, you're running the company properly, uh, you won't have to pay Class 1 national insurance contributions. Another benefit is there's no minimum requirement for capital, which, mean, which is going to be good for you. Another one is that uh, LLPs can enter into contracts themselves. Uh, and just like you can uh, as an ind individual. So uh, in whatever property you buy, 
belongs to the LLP. A benefit alongside that is this, when a member leaves, there's no need to change the legal title or register because the LLP enters into contracts and owns property itself. All of the, those assets are owned by the LLP. So you don't need to go to land registry and change everything over. Uh, and unlike a 1907 general partnership, you don't need to have one member who has unlimited liability. So all of the members would have limited liability. Those are some of the advantages and I hope you found them useful, Mike.